we continue from where we left on there, we, we were explaining um, the difference between fear and anxiety and we did talk about the um, threats, externalizing it and then internalizing as anxiety and then externalization of it and the response to an external threat is the fear. The term anxiety disorder includes fear and fear as we already discussed in our previous episodes is called phobias as well as anxiety. So it's a mixture of fears, phobias as well as anxiety. So anxiety disorder is a phobia, is the fears and phobias. Anxiety disorders are often comorbid with other mental disorders as earlier described as we we talked about earlier in other episodes particularly clinical depression which may occur in as much as 60 percent of people with anxiety disorders so it's comorbid it comes as i was saying it's, it comes as a package sometimes you have one and you have the rest of it as well you may have childhood anxiety disorder you can have an additional social anxiety disorder generalized anxiety disorder separation anxiety disorder you may have all this is obsession or obsession compulsive disorder ocd obsessive compulsive so you, you you can have all these things together when you have one it's comorbid it comes with a lot of all these disorders so the fact that there is considerable overlap between symptoms of anxiety and depression and that the same environmental triggers can provoke symptoms in either condition may help to explain this high rate of comorbidity. Studies have also indicated that anxiety disorders are more likely among those with familiar or family history of anxiety disorders, especially certain types. So as we already described, and as we already um, deliberated on the other episodes, individuals are more likely to have anxiety disorders when they have history, family history of anxiety disorder. So it might be genetical, it might be pathological, it might be biological, it might be, you know, a trigger factor of a traumatic event. But those that are likely to pick up anxiety disorders are those with family history of what? Anxiety disorders. So these are some of the real truths about this whole topic that we are discussing, mainly because of COVID-19, that we'll be able to seek for support or assistance when we get an uncontrollable situation of anxiety so that when it becomes clinical we have a referral and we are able to see a professional to help, help and support us so let's go on sexual dysfunction often accompanies anxiety disorders although it is difficult to determine whether anxiety causes the sexual dysfunction or whether they arise from a common cause this is a topic of its own because we are really concentrating on stress in regards to COVID-19. And I know stress can bring a whole lot of things. It alters your chemistry. It can cause sexual dysfunction because if you are not sound up here, you are not going to be in that situation of entertaining your partner or entertaining anybody else within your um, sexual sort of um, acquaintances so this is some kind of a part that wasn't um, part of my discussion but at least it is part of stress determinants because when you are stressed it brings all these things upon yourself so most common manifestations in individuals with anxiety disorders are avoidance of intercourse premature ejaculation or erectile dysfunction I don't think we were ready for this um, topic now, but I was just trying to pinpoint 
that at this stage, in this COVID-19 era of stress and anxiety, you can really go through that situation without even realizing because you are not yourself you are not thinking straight you are not good in yourself you are not feeling happy in yourself so that anxiety disorder you can avoid going close to your partner or your girlfriend or anything like that and that is not what i'm here to talk about i'm trying to say that stress can trigger all so many things that will affect your livelihood in any other form or shape so i don't think i'll go into the dis sexual dysfunction it's particularly common among people affected by panic disorder and all that that i know that is a fact but i'm not here to treat about or to talk about sexual dysfunction, we are talking about stress. I know stress can bring a whole lot of things, including sexual dysfunction, and it can trigger people that have got panic disorders, and that is not funny at all. And these are the things that causes divorces in families, and these are the stuff that causes breakup of relationships and all that. Some of these topics are very delicate, but then we have um, specific times that we will come back and maybe deliberate on it so that we are aware of certain things that we are supposed to do when it comes to that state of mind. Because you have to have a very common and great, good state of mind in order for you to be very active and functional whenever stress kicks in i'm telling you my friend you will not be able to do so many things especially when it goes to the stage or to the state of anxiety disorder because anxiety disorder in its term it means that at that stage it's been diagnosed and at that stage you are under a professional support or a professional help because there are referrals that are made into that clinical areas that you have the multidisciplinary teams coming into play to organize your package in terms of your care plans so that they can tailor your services to you directly and nobody else so when it comes to anxiety disorders it's a very critical topic especially in this COVID-19 era. Make sure that you abide by the government's contingency plans that are strict, that are helpful, that will allow you to be able to think straight, that wouldn't push you into a situation whereby you're distressed because you think you've got the disease. You are in a situation whereby you have to abide by the government strict rules, the government protocols. So, in effect, I want to quickly um, draw the curtain close to the stress situation that we've discussed all along because we've been discussing anxiety disorders we have all the different different topics that we've had if you want to know all what we've discussed you can um, go back and check all the videos we've done generalized anxiety disorder we've done separation anxiety disorder we've done um, childhood anxiety disorder we've done obsessive compulsive disorder we've done all the anxiety disorder we've treated and explained stress the meaning of stress and the stress difference between fear and anxiety we've done all that we've been able to differentiate between the statistics and all that and the number of people that are affected so make sure that you go back and tap all that information and then see if it's going to help you help somebody because we are trying to help ourselves in the community especially our young generation if you're a teacher if you're a lecturer, if you are a tutor, 
you are able to have all this information and carry on with that. Do some talking therapy, do some CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy with your um, pupils, your students, and your um, members in class. And then you go a long way into saving their adult life. And that is a basic necessity, is a CPR, is the first aid of our support to give back to community. So, um, 